Dominic, what was your thinking behind the professional standards for teaching and leadership? I think the first thing is it's not my thinking, it's the thinking of the people that were involved in creating the standards. Uh, and the, the working groups uh, wanted to make sure that the standards resonated with teachers themselves, that they were standards that teachers could uh, see as something to help them grow and develop as professionals rather than standards that were imposed on them, uh, bars to jump over, barriers to break through. The standards are supposed to be helping us to, all of us individually, to get as good as we can be. Mick, there's a lovely link between the teaching standards and the formal leadership standards. Uh, what was the thinking behind that? Well, the leadership standards have at their heart, as all the standards, they have pedagogy. Because in the end, what will make children learn the most is the pedagogy that they experience. So the leadership's role is how do we encourage teachers to offer the best pedagogy they can. And the teacher's role is to seek <laughs> to be themselves leaders. One of the standards is about leadership. How do we, how do we encourage every teacher to think they've got a role in moving the system forward, not just their classroom and their school? So it's a... It's a real opportunity. It's a challenge, but it's a real opportunity. What advice would you give to school leaders to embed these standards into their practice? Uh, the standards are the teacher's standards. So how do we get the teacher to think these are my standards, not the standards being applied to me? How do we get the teacher to think, I own these standards, how do I take them forward? So the way a head teacher talks about the standards is really important. And for the head teacher to talk about the leadership standards in the same way, my leadership standards take me forward. Yeah. My leadership standards are helping me to help you. I think encourages the right outlook, the right atmosphere, the right attitude towards the standards going forward. There's obviously a link between the teaching standards and the formal leadership standards. The new standards for other people working the educational profession will come in next year. Will they follow the same pattern and model? Well, it's back to the working group again, but I, I suspect that uh, there's, a, there's a model now that pretty well everybody agrees with and the, and the swell is towards that, the five dimensions of the standards. Uh, the standards coming through for teaching assistants, those who assist, assist teaching, very much follow the same framework and they've been really well received by the teaching assistants in the trials that have used them. And uh, next year, there are to understand there are plans to try and develop standards for challenge advisors. And you would think, wouldn't you, that standards that challenge advisors want to own would focus on how do we make ped pedagogy as good as it can be? How do we encourage schools to be innovative? How do we get people collaborating? And so I would imagine that the standards will follow the same structure. The professional learning element, uh, which focuses on active research, that's going to prove quite challenging in schools. What do you think those challenges are? Ah, again, I think, that, <laughs> I mean, the, the, the national mission is brilliant because it's bringing together so many Absolutely. different elements of the way in which the system needs to change. And professional learning is one of the fundamental ones. And of course, it, there's been a model of professional learning that's existed for probably 30 years now, which is uh, teachers and school leaders queuing up to find out what they've next got to do and be taught how to do things. And some of that's very successful, but a lot of it is uh, perfunctory. And a lot of it uh, implies that teachers have got to learn from somebody else uh, and have it done to them. Whereas what the new standards expect and what professional learning is really moving towards is that teachers individually and collectively define where they need to go next with support from their school. And they take responsibility the standards are about people taking their own responsibility so that accountability sits with them and they want accountability. I, I think professional learning is at the heart of it all. As associates, obviously we welcome the emphasis on leadership and looking at the leadership uh, strands within the teaching standards and the leadership stands within the formal leadership roles. Um, what was the thinking behind that? Uh, the leadership standards, I think, uh, a real opportunity for anybody who's currently a school leader or for anybody who's anticipating being one to think about what the real job is and, and the job is being the person that helps to drive your school forward and helps other people to develop but there's a bigger role there's a role that's to do with linking with people across the nation and beyond in terms of exploring how we can make our schools as good as they can possibly be there are there are things in the leadership standards about optimism 
You know, optimism is a key facet of leadership. And it's not about demonstrating one Wednesday afternoon in June that you can be optimistic. It is about helping people to think that your school is the sort of place that can uh, inspire children to be optimistic, but also inspire other schools to think that they can work with you and you can work with them to push boundaries of learning forward for everybody. I think the new leadership standards uh, expect a different culture of leadership in our schools across Wales and they expect leaders to be part of the nation's push rather than do what the government asks. And I know that the government, uh, cabinet secretary, is absolutely intent on school leaders pushing the agenda for themselves and for their children. Uh, one question heads are uh, all asking is how do these standards relate to the statutory performance management uh, procedures? The uh, performance management, as it's been for s s some years now, requires a regular and usually an annual review of how somebody has progressed and developed and whether they're meeting the expectations. The standards on their own will never and never have been able to identify strengths and weaknesses in a summative way. The standards fit against the job description of the individual teacher, school policies, and the expectations that the school has for this year or this period of time. And the challenge of leadership is to pull all of those together in the conversation that reviews a teacher's practice and their performance and helps them to move forward. And I think the, ex the anticipation of the working group in developing the standards was that we'll accept that most teachers want to be good, most teachers are doing a decent job, and we'll help teachers to move forward from that position by using standards that help them to explore their work with other professionals, maybe the head teacher, but maybe others, so that we can take the descriptors as a way of delving into the practice. And one of the really big messages is that the descriptors are the opening into conversation, an ongoing discussion and dialogue discourse about pedagogy or practice rather than simply being a marker that you tick to say that's you good or not. Looking at the level descriptors within each aspect, there's a kind of a general uh, level and there's a more kind of advanced level. In hindsight, wouldn't it have been better maybe to have um, clearer milestones and maybe more milestones in, in that development? One of the things the working group did was to look at uh, the way standards have been developed in jurisdictions and countries around the globe and compare them with what had happened in UK previously. And, and the typical model was of stepping stones or milestones, perhaps five or six, uh, and then lots of criteria, so you ended up with a spreadsheet. What, we've, what we found was, uh, in deeper analysis, uh, that so often the, these descriptors become almost impossible to understand and they become uh, an activity where you play with the noun and the adjective to try and make sense of it rather than explore teaching. And sometimes, you know, what's on the right-hand column at the bottom is way more important than what's at the left-hand column at the top, which might be a good indicator. Uh, but you, you get into such trivial explanations so that we found that you could be, you know, you were, you were good, you were gooder, you were best, betterer, and it, it became almost embarrassing at times. When the trials took place, uh, people took the descriptors and whilst they might seem uh, complex to begin with, people saw that as a real benefit and a real opportunity to talk about teaching and their practice in a real detailed way. Because teaching is not a simple task, it is multifaceted. It is a challenging task every day of the, every day of the year because of the richness and the, the delight that children bring, but they also bring their differences. And what we were trying to do was recognise that in the standards and not come up with some very simple descriptors that implied it was a simple task. As head teachers, we are so inspired at the moment about what's going on in education in Wales. What excites you about the developments? I think that Wales is uh, on the cusp of something absolutely... Uh, tremendous in terms of education and I think it's interesting when I go to other countries to hear people talking about the developments in Wales. Now at the moment they're talking about the developments in Wales, what we need them to talk about is the achievements in Wales. So what excites me is how we get from the anticipation to the adventure and then look back and see the success. <laughs>